Having lived in the Northeast my entire life, I haven't experienced much in the way of natural disasters. Once when I was in middle school, an earthquake hit upstate New York, but it was too light for me to feel anything. There was also that time I accidentally burped really loud backstage during one of my school plays, which I guess you can call a natural disaster. My dad, who lived in Oklahoma for a while, told me once that the scariest natural disaster that can affect the U.S. was tornadoes, to which I replied, you never said anything like that, but I really appreciate you letting me puppet you to say something that would make for a great segue into the topic of my video. Tornadoes. Tornadoes are indeed scary. Every year, over 1,200 tornadoes touch down somewhere in the United States. Despite the frequency of the storms, and the fact that we get 10 times as many tornadoes as the next leading country, suck at Canada, America wins again, no one really seems to pay them any mind. When's the last time you saw a major news coverage about a tornado? The last time I heard about an important twister was when I watched Twister. Tornadoes don't get cute names like hurricanes do, and when they do get named, it's usually something boring, like a long list of scientists' names or the name of the place where it struck. I'm not sure why nobody seems to care about twisters. Maybe because they usually occur in the more forgettable of the 50 states. Mostly those square ones that you're bound to mix up unless you've lived here long enough to notice the subtle differences between the shape of Kansas and the shape of Wyoming. Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, along with South Dakota, make up what's known as Tornado Alley, an area of the U.S. where tornadoes are most frequent. This vertical strip of land is so attractive to tornadoes, mostly because of how attractive it is to severe storm systems in general. Scientists aren't exactly super sure how tornadoes form, but they know that they're born from within supercell thunderstorms. Big, angry, rotating thunderstorms that hang around in the sky dropping baseball-sized hailstones. They're the product of a secret love affair between the weather systems of Mexico and Canada, making Tornado Alley a very fun name for a location that's nothing more than a dirty motel rendezvous. When dry, cold air moving south from Canada meets with warm, moist air traveling north from the Gulf of Mexico, they just can't help but keep away from each other, swirling together to form these massive supercell thunderstorms capable of 100 mile an hour winds. Supercell thunderstorms begin as big vortexes created by wind shear. When the warm Gulf air rises through the colder Canadian air, it creates an updraft, and if conditions are right, this updraft starts rotating even faster. But having air that spins as it rises isn't the only thing you need to make a tornado. You only need to worry when the warm air and the cool air start doing their dance near the ground. These rotational gusts get faster and faster the closer they get, like a figure skater pulling in their arms to spin more. Eventually, these long funnels of quickly spinning wind and water can reach the ground. Only then are they considered tornadoes and begin their path of destruction. Tornadoes are like that one guy at a party who you're not sure who invited him, but at this point it doesn't matter. He's trashing the place and just launched a cow through your window. Once a tornado touches down, it can rip itself a pathway up to a mile wide and 50 miles long. If your farm or office or school happens to be in one of these paths, the tornado will be sure to rip that up too. If anything, popular media coverage of tornadoes has led me to believe that they have the ability to pick things up off the ground and leisurely float them through the air like this cow, or these guys, canoeing through the chaos of a twister in Kansas. Without getting into the semantics of the aerodynamics of a cow, can a tornado really pick up and launch things like in the movies? Well, yes, tornadoes are easily capable of flinging cars in mobile homes, picking them up in one place and putting them down in another. In 1995, a tornado hit the industrial district of Pampa, Texas, and moved a 30,000-pound piece of machinery. If a funnel of spinning wind can do that, then surely it can lift a cow, a canoe, or a flimsy Kansas farmhouse. The most destructive twister on record in the United States occurred in Joplin, Missouri in 2011. This tornado was unique in that the longer it spun, the bigger and stronger it got. It took 38 minutes for the sucker to spin itself out, but in that time it managed to rack up $2.8 billion in damages. The National Weather Service reported that 75% of the city of Joplin had been damaged by the tornado, making it the most damaging tornado in the history of the U.S. While tornadoes may be unique and slightly entertaining in the world of natural disasters, what we realize when we do see them covered is that they're not as silly as Metro Goldwyn Mayer would like us to believe. In fact, they're just as deadly and destructive as anything else, and I personally think it's a shame that we don't give them the time of day. So if there's anything that you should take away from this video, it should be to appreciate the next tornado you come across. It's not every day that you get to be lifted off your feet by something beautiful.